and we are live. Hey, welcome to another session of Building the Bull. The session is brought to you by the Skylabs and Vetter Ecosystem. My name is Ryan, and I am so glad to be your host. Hope you're having a fantastic Tuesday. Now, over the last year, 16,000 crypto projects have launched in the space. And how would you like to get paid to share quality crypto pre-sales on our CrowdX calendar? That's exactly what these sessions are designed to do. They're designed to equip you with the knowledge, resources, and experience to support you in finding great projects. Now, as a community, we work together, something called crowdsourcing, to find projects that have potential. At the same time, we bring up warnings and red flags about projects that may bring concern. And for the last year, it's actually been an entire year, We've recorded over around 120 plus live sessions just like this, where we support the community navigating the CrowdX calendar, finding 2x to 100x crypto gems, and paying out literally thousands of dollars worth of cryptocurrency in the process. We host two live sessions like this every single week, and welcome, glad that you're here. As you are tuning in, go ahead and drop a hi, hello, letting everybody know where you are watching from. And uh, there are two things I wanted to share today. Uh, before we jump into, I did want to give some shout shout outs to uh, some recent gains uh, that uh, that happened here recently. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, this project right here was, uh, I think, it was uh, Matrix GBT. We talked about this last week, actually, at the end at the end of the call last week on Thursday. Like I said, we host two sessions like this every single week. We did talk about this project. We did bring it up. And we looked at it, and uh, this project did launch um, today. Uh, this was brought to us by uh, by Vettergard or Remain Strong, and uh, off to a good start. Off to a good start. Uh, you know, not not breaking any records. Okay, definitely not breaking any records. Uh, but hey, we're, we're positive, and it's a profitable project, and that's always a win. That's always a win in this space. So. Uh, that's one of the benefits of tuning in. Not only do you get to learn, but you get some insights into uh, you know what's going on in the market and see some unique projects. Like we cover one to three projects, or I guess two, probably two to four projects. Uh, we cover two to four projects every single week. So again, shout out to you, uh, Remain Strong, for uh, posting this project and congrats on a profitable project within the first 24 hour time frame. We got Mang and we got Carl with us. Hope you guys are having a great day. Next up, we have MMT. This is MetaTrader, my MetaTrader token. This is posted by Ionic, and it actually launched today as well. So we had two launches uh, today, and uh, this one is absolutely crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. And and what I mean by that is, um, uh, they had a solid solid pre-sell. Let's go ahead and take a look at the pre-sell. Uh, they filled 400 BNB within two minutes or so. I'm sorry, not BNB, Ethereum. <laughs> 400 Ethereum. Very, very big difference between BNB and Ethereum. Uh, but uh, a thousand contributors, um, they filled this, like I said, within a few minutes. And so uh, this is one of those awesome projects that uh, you know was not on my radar. You know, Hopefully yeah, it was on your radar. And uh, you were able to, uh, you know, see this. That's the beautiful thing about being involved in the community and plugging into the calendar. Uh, but they're off to a pretty good start. You know, right now the all-time high is sitting at a uh, a 2.3x, and uh, we'll have the official we'll have the official uh, val and all-time high. You know, after 24 hours have passed. So hey, Luis, welcome. Hope you're having a fantastic day. So again, shout out to. Uh, to Louise for posting, you know, Matrix GPT. Shout out to Ionic for posting my MetaTrader token. Uh, next up, we have AI3, and uh, this was actually brought to us by the King of the Jungle, <laughs> King of the Jungle, which would be Dante Zamundo. And uh, the reason he is uh, the King of the Jungle, um, his icon on the DAP, his icon on the platform, is uh, is a lion, uh, but he actually holds a record for the most hot streaks here's a record for the most hot streak bonuses he has received a lot a lot of money in the form of bonuses for posting projects to the calendar and so ai3 was a pre-sum uh they filled 290 bnb 
and uh, right here uh, having a decent decent chart decent chart here let's go ahead and take a look see what we got here and I believe this this is launched uh, earlier um, yeah so this was this was a few days back so uh, we'll have 24 hours here uh, let's go ahead and take a look and let's see here so what's profitable within the first 24 hours <clears throat> so it is the all-time high was was nothing spectacular uh, not to lose any sleep over you got 1.6x uh, but we do have a vowel of probably around a vowel probably right right, right here it's 1.3x okay nothing again okay, nothing to lose nothing to lose sleep over it's definitely not life-changing definitely not life-changing but hey a profitable project is a profitable project and we can take that all day long one of the things you'll realize <clears throat> with projects is uh, base hits are okay <laughs> it's okay to get a base hit it's okay to get multiple base hits consistently getting base hits is massive massive winnings because what happens when you consistently get base hits all of a sudden you're gonna hit a home run and what happens when the bases are loaded that's a grand slam and uh, when you hit some of these Grand Slam projects like Metalleride has had or like Gordon Gecko has had or, or even like myself, um, you know, I got lucky with a project that ended up doing a stealth launch and it had a unbelievable gain within the first 24 hours. We're talking like 100 plus X within the first 24 hours. And the only way those things happen, see a lot of people shoot for those Grand Slams. A lot of people... You know that they're banking on that. You know they're 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 they're, they're over leveraging, over risking, banking on that. And guess what? There's no control. You have no control over what's going to happen at lunch. We have no control. Okay. And um, but consistently showing up, consistently checking off the boxes, consistently finding the things that you look for in projects puts you in a position for those grand slams put you in a position for those grand slams and it's a it's a sweet feeling it's a sweet experience okay uh, next up we have um cat girl ai this is brought to us by uh, by scott and uh this one had a uh a successful successful launch as well let's go ahead and take a look this is 1.8x okay val probably around uh that would be probably around right around here so again 1.6x Oh, one thing to note. One thing to note on um, on this project, my MetaTrader token. Um, look at this right here. Twenty-four hour volume, five million. All right, this is a four point seven million market cap. So while you know sometimes it's not that impressive when projects only quote unquote only do a two x, uh, there's a ton of volume happening right now. I mean, just massive amounts of volume. So there's a lot of people who are excited about this project, and um, so it's really cool to see. So I wanted to point that out. Now, while it's quote unquote only a two x, uh, there is massive volume at play here. Massive, massive volume. Carl says, "Hope to feel better." Hey, thanks, Carl. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, Sunday and yesterday felt pretty good. Um, I did, I did swim yesterday morning, and I, and I had a bike ride earlier today. And uh, I have a little bit of stuffiness now, but uh, I did take a little nap. <laughs> I took a little nap before we hopped in the session, and um, it felt it felt a little bit better. So hey, day by day we're getting better. I appreciate you. Thank you for uh, for mentioning that. So today's topic is what is a simple pre-sale strategy perfect for beginners? What's a simple pre-sale strategy that's perfect for beginners? And this is someone who, you know, perhaps you're, you're brand new to pre-sales. Perhaps you're still learning. Maybe even someone who's really low on funds. Okay, I want to talk about a strategy that I don't think people realize, the kind of opportunity that's really here. Okay. Now, one of the things that I taught months ago, you know, we've been doing these sessions for a year now. Can you believe it? It's been a year uh, what? How, look how far we've come. Pretty, pretty amazing. But it's been a year since we've been doing these sessions, and one of the things I used to teach was the idea of paper trading. And paper trading 
would be that you treat this project as if you were going to get in it, but you don't get in it with your real money. Okay? You show up to the pre-sale, you pretend that you contribute, you show up and do your research, you, you show up and you ask your questions. When it's time to actually contribute, you don't contribute anything, but you you know, you would have thought that, hey, you have a budget, you have a set a certain amount set aside, and and then when it launches, you show up to the launch. And you treat it seriously. You treat it as if you actually participated in the project. And when it launches, you show up. And then when it hits your take profit, you do your thing. Okay? You do your thing. That's called paper trading. Now, in addition to paper trading, one of the things that I would definitely recommend, and this is not financial advice at all. This is just a great opportunity for you to learn and take action, okay? Opportunity for you to learn and take action is there is just as great of an opportunity to, you know, we I, I just showed, you know, four projects that launched in the last handful of days. Now, as we've talked about, we have no idea which projects are going to pump. We have no pro idea which projects are going to dump. It all comes down to checking your boxes, doing your due diligence. And it, it, it is going to do what it is going to do. It's totally out of our control. Okay. But a low risk strategy that takes out gambling, it takes out the risk, is... In addition to paper trading, you actually post projects on the CrowdX calendar. Now, some of you may be thinking, what? Hold on a second, Ryan. I thought this was a pre-sale strategy. Hear me out on this. Okay, hear me out on this. You can show up to pre-sales not knowing if the team is legit. I mean, I, the other day I just saw, so Anonadox is a, uh, is a KYC company high standards they've raised the bar a lot of reputable projects have launched are using the kyc guess what one of the projects rugged okay so even with super high standards people are still going to try to scam people people are still going to be criminals and crooks and thieves crypto makes you more of what you already are all right. So even with Surtech, even with KYC, even with real projects, even with real dev teams, sometimes things may not go as planned. Okay. And if you're new, you're still learning, or you're low on funds, risking whether it's thirty dollars or a hundred dollars. Okay. Risking it on this, it may be a little too risky. It might be too risky and maybe there's still some things you get to learn and go through the process and figure out and figure out how to understand just the other day just the other day there was a project that that was that was launched prematurely someone launched a project prematurely on the platform and it was the it was a bogus contract and so mistakes can happen all the time and so what I'm trying to say is when you're brand new, there's no reason to just jump all in if you don't have the confidence or belief or the strategy in place yet. And scouting pre-sales is a great opportunity for you to learn how this process works. Every day, we see people who have been scammed, they've sent funds to the wrong contract, they've submitted the wrong contract, they've been in the bogus Telegram group, <laughs> and I just scratch my head thinking, how does this happen? <laughs> what I'm saying, though, is when you start posting projects, you start scouting, it puts you in a position to learn, grow, and develop. And you can start sharpening that axe. Again, the biggest point of this is without putting your money at risk. But it's not for nothing. You actually get paid to post projects on the CrowdX calendar. Let's go ahead and look, take a look over here. When you first start posting... You're going to earn 250 Vetter, okay, as a yellow. Once you post five projects to the calendar, your rank is going to go from yellow to beige, and now you're going to earn 750 Vetter, okay? 
If you consistently post great projects, your rank will increase. When it's green, you earn 1,750 better. When it's purple, you, own, you earn 2,250 better every time you post a project. It's pretty cool. Now here's where it gets even better. The hot streak bonus structure. Okay, The hot streak bonus structure puts you in a position to actually earn significant gains in crypto you, utilizing BNB as well as Vetter token, okay, you actually get paid when you post profitable crypto projects. This is a game changer. So we go over here and we look at the tiers, and you can see the different tiers here. Tier zero, you know, you hold zero better. Tier one, ten thousand better. Tier two, twenty five thousand better. Tier three. At tier three, this is what you get, allows you to be able to post projects on the CrowdX calendar and, and receive payment. Tier three, there are people who've increased their ranks. Tier three to tier four, tier four to diamond one, diamond one to diamond two, diamond two to diamond three. There are people in our community who've increased their ranks two ways, two ways. One, by posting projects on the CrowdX calendar Let's go ahead and look at top paid scout. So by posting projects on the CrowdX calendar, Hellstrom has earned 636,000 better. 636,000 better. In addition to that, he's earned hundreds of dollars worth of cryptocurrency, uh, both BNB and Vetter token. That's allowed us to increase his rank. I know that... Um, uh, Radical has done the same thing. I know that Captain Kurt has done the same thing. All these people have increased their rank simply by contributing. Okay? And on top of that, the extra BNB and Vetter coming in from the hot street bonuses. A lot of people are sleeping right now on this concept. A lot of people are sleeping right now. And again, if, if, if you like the risk, if you like the rush, by all means, you know, do your thing. But a risk-free opportunity to learn and actually get paid to learn about crypto pre-sales and get paid to learn how to study and research and, and make significant fun is absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, just in three hot streak bonus payout, payouts, and we did this for the last nine months, so about once a quarter, we paid out over twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars have been paid out to a handful of scouts in our community. Twelve grand, twelve grand. And I'd be willing to say that unless you just manage to get in all these projects that just did absolutely phenomenal, okay, that there's a high likelihood if you're brand new starting off, you're more likely to have a better ROI on your time and money being involved with scouting projects, earning better token, and being involved in the hot streak reward system. It is a game changer. $12,000 paid out over nine months. Okay, three separate payments. It's fantastic. I mean, that average is out for the year. $1,000 a month is paid out to our community. <laughs> $1,000 a month is paid out to our community by posting projects to the calendar and those projects doing well. And again, that's in addition to these numbers right here. At the end of the year, the end of 2022, we paid out over 4 million Vetter tokens. 4 million. That's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. So again, this is a strategy that uh, I think a lot of people are sleeping on. Um, I think that, uh, and here, here's something to really think about this. Right now is a great time to position yourself to capitalize on this opportunity. It's a great it's a great time to capitalize on this because uh, you know, right now people are sleeping, people are not aware, people do not understand how big of an opportunity it is to scout projects on the calendar and how big of an opportunity the hot streak bonus is. When people realize how powerful it is, guess what? More competition, scouting means less projects available for you to scout. Okay, so right now, it, it is prime picking. 
it is prime picking. So there's a good opportunity for you to uh, to get in there and uh, and get some great results. So with that, I uh, hope that uh, that idea was was supportive and helpful. And I wanted to talk about a project that uh, that I saw over the weekend, just doing a little bit of. Uh, uh, looking at old projects and I talked about this concept a few weeks ago we've been talking a little bit about AI and things like that and I just want to pull this project up and I want to see what you think um, if anything stands out to you when I when I pull up this project okay let's see let's see let's see let's see let's see where can oh here we go all right I'm going to pull up this, 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 this group of people right here, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to share your thoughts. What do you think about these people? Okay, what comes up for you? Um, what, what, uh, what, is it, what does it make you think? What kind of vibe do you get? What thoughts come up? You know, think back to some of our previous, our, our pre previous, I made a new word. <laughs> <laughs> think back to some of our previous <laughs> our previous sessions and um, you know when you see these faces what stands out to you about this team what stands out to you about these images uh, is does anything make you feel a certain way um, anything like that you know just feel free to uh, feel free to um, Feel free to go through that. Okay, Carl says not real people. Carl, what makes you what makes you think that? What makes you give what what gives you that vibe or gives you that thought? And other people, do you have a similar vibe or feel? It, you know, I'm I'm just curious. I'm just curious. That there's not there's not a right or wrong answer. Um, just curious. Like I said, as I was going through this, something just caught my attention and it just really stood out to me. Okay, so one of the things that stood out to me was even though these are all different people, it's all kind of the same. I, I, I know that can be like weird. Maybe that, that, that maybe that's like oxymoron. <laughs> but something stands out and something makes me feel like, wait, this is bogus. Now, I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I don't know. Okay, I don't know if it is or isn't. Okay? But when I look at this, this made me think back to the time where we looked at that website, you know, this person does not exist.com, which I think is actually not working anymore. I tried it the other day and uh, yeah, it's no longer functioning. Okay. And so Roman says uh, the photos look AI generated. There's similar in vibrance, angle, etc., but the photos aren't taken in the same place. That so like there's there's something that stands out. There's something that stands out. So like all of these, they have a background in the photo, but there's actually not a background. And when you remember when we did the AI stuff, when we looked at that this person does not exist, um, you know they that was one of the, the major the major themes. The, the backgrounds of the, this person does not exist.com, which is not working right now, so we can't look at it. Um, the images are just random in the background, okay? But like every one of these people, to me, it just it just said the same thing, you know? Um, and uh, it, just, it just stuck out stuck out like a sore thumb to me. And I just thought it was so fascinating. I thought it was so fascinating, and um, and so. Uh, you know, so I go to check out the the uh, the uh, the LinkedIn here, and you know, using the same image on the LinkedIn, of course. Um, so you know, that's unfortunate, or I mean, to be expected, I guess. Um, but then none of the others have actual, you know, there's no there's no socials to any of the other people, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, you know, it just goes to the website. <laughs> and so, uh, so anyway, I was scrolling through here and this just made me stop in my tracks when I saw this. Um, and it just, to me, it almost seems like this project used, uh, you know, this is not a real person or AI generated people to, to fill their team space, um, and give a face to whatever this person was. Now, whether, you know, 
whether that's accurate or not, time will tell. We'll see. Okay, we'll see. Uh, but if we were to check on this project, if we were to dig in and you know see how this project did, I, I think they actually. I don't. I don't think they filled their. Uh, I don't think they filled their uh, their pre-sale. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't fill their pre-sale. Or they didn't launch rather one of the two. So <laughs> this was a fair launch, <laughs> and they didn't raise any. <laughs> they didn't raise anything. Uh, now this was back in November, all right, back in November. And here's what's super crazy to me. You, you guys heard me throw some shade at this guy last week. I don't want to throw too much shade at him, but I'm going to dig deep into this guy. And there's another knucklehead on here that. Um, you know, over the summer, we did a little uh, test or we looked at the data to see how fair launches performed. I'm curious about how this guy's calls perform. Uh, this guy and um, there's another guy. Let's see if we can spot him. Let's see if we can spot him. You guys probably know who I'm talking about. Um, he's got a beard and uh, he's always, he's all over this stuff. And this look familiar? Some of the projects we talked about last week. Here's another AI program. Same color schemes. Same stuff. Same nonsense. Um, our our friend. Our friend's not here. Let's see. Am I gonna find? Am I gonna find him? No. Oh. There we go. There's our friend. So I'm really curious. I'm gonna do a deep dive on these two guys. And again, they may be good guys. Um, but here's my point. How many views? Go ahead and type it in the chat. How many views do you think this video got? Okay, go ahead and type your guess in the chat. How many views do you think this video got? Okay, and let's go over to the Telegram. Telegram, um, now this this channel has, you know, uh, 296 subscribers. Let's see if this channel is the same. This channel has 3,571 members. Okay, <laughs> 3,500 members in this channel. I mean, that's that's a lot of people. Okay, that's a lot of people. Um, I mean, now they're, you know, they're, their chat is overrun by bots and people spamming. Like, they just abandoned the project. Um, they just totally, totally abandoned the project. Let me see if this is the same. Okay, it is the same, the same, the same pre-sale here. Okay, so go ahead and type, type in, type in the comments. Just take a wild guess how many video views you think this has. But so I often see bogus, not bogus projects, but I often see um, projects tank quite frequently uh, when these guys are involved. Now I don't know if um, if if this is if this is part of the social proof. I don't know if this is a dev who you know, I don't know what the relationship is. Uh, but you better believe I'm gonna figure something out. <laughs> You know, I'm gonna dig. I'm gonna dig deep and figure something out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at YouTube. This video has 1.9 thousand. Okay, so 1,900 subscribe or 1,900 views. Okay, 1,900 views, 17 comments, and 137 likes. Yet we had zero people participate in the pre-sale on the fair launch and. And uh, the project has been abandoned since, you know, since, since November. All right. I don't, I mean, of course it has. <laughs> I think that, uh, again, I'm not saying this is his whole operation is totally bogus. I'm not saying his whole operation is totally bogus. But I am saying that um, when you see these influencers, I think it's really worth, um, it's really worth considering uh, what the results are long term. All right, um, you look at these guys, and in three days he's got over six thousand views, twenty-seven comments. He has the like fu function turned off. We can't see the likes, uh, but I, I I think this is another element of smoke and mirrors. Um, personally, I think it's another element of smoke and mirrors, and so just be mindful. Just be mindful. Now, don't get me wrong. There have been some projects that did really good. Okay? There have been some projects that did really good. But, and this is a big but, uh, how many projects did not do good? 
<laughs> and it, the risk to reward. Over the summer, the numbers for fair launches were, you know, 17% of the fair launches did a 2x or more within the first 24 hours. 15% uh, of the projects, um, or yeah, 15% of the fair launches did a 2x or more within the seven days. And then 96% of the fair launches were gone after 30 days. Okay, so it's one thing to have an opinion, but it's different when we look at the numbers. So I'm going to do the same thing for these YouTube guys, uh, this dude and uh, and this dude, and I just want to see what their numbers, how the numbers stack up. Is it 50-50? Is it 60-40? What is it? And then when we know, we know that like, okay, just by default, the kind of projects that this guy partners with and the kind of projects that this guy partners with are what? What are they? You know, what, what's the quality of them? Are they, is it quality? Is it not quality? Okay. Um, just, I don't even know where this is going to take me. <laughs> What's, uh, you guys out for an adventure? Official telegram. Crypto promo. Okay. Crypto promo. I wasn't sure what, what we're going to find here. Official telegram. Let's see. The DeFi well. Okay. So it's just a direct, a direct, uh, a direct link to his, uh, his telegram. Let's see what his Twitter looks like. 3,300 followers on Twitter. Yeah, so <clears throat> the biggest thing I would say about these two guys, and again, I don't, I don't think they have nefarious intent necessarily. I don't, I don't know that for sure yet. I would just say that uh, they are, uh, I, I would be, I, I think this is a, a big fluffed inflated number. 47,000 subscribers, 56,000 subscribers. I know without a doubt the view count on these are absolutely bogus. Absolutely bogus. All right, so just wanted to go over that. Like I said, I, I found this project, and, you know, the website looks pretty pretty decent. It's something different. It stands out. Um, but uh, when I saw that team, I was like, oh, man, I, I get to talk about this. Because, you know, this is what we had uh, previously talked about a few weeks back. So... Luis says, I tend to trust too easily. That's why I'm here to listen to you, think outside the box. Yeah, you know, Metallo Rad and I have said before, you know, it's almost like um, it's their job to convince us that they're, le they're legit, you know. And uh, some teams do a really good job and some teams don't. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, when I saw that team, I don't even know what made me think about it. I think maybe there was an image. Maybe there's an image in Telegram. Let's see. Maybe there was an image in Telegram that made me think, wait a second, that guy looks 100% bogus. <laughs> uh, no, I guess not. I saw something somewhere that made, that, that put up my, uh, it put it on my radar, that's for sure. Put it on my radar. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a project on the Crylex calendar. Let me close out all this stuff. Got a lot of tabs open right now. Yeah, exactly, Roman. Exactly. In the Vetter community, you're guilty until proven innocent. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, their own paper trail, their own their own story, their own content and continuity and white paper and graphics and pictures and bios and AMAs, you know, that's what, uh, that's what helps us. That's what helps their own innocence. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and take a look at the calendar. All right. We're going to take a look at factor. Okay. So uh, this process uh, what we're about to do is just take a look at a project, um, and this process is, you know, the process to sort for best projects together as a community, and, you know, the live session that we're on right now is merely a step in that process. I will say, crypto is risky, and no way, shape, or perform am I telling to invest in cryptocurrency. I don't know why anybody would want to invest in crypto. This is not financial advice. Please do your own research. I'm going to share my own thought process while we're looking at this project, and sometimes I'm right, and sometimes I'm wrong. It's all 100% subjective. The purpose of this 
is to support you in what to look for as you are scouting your own projects. We both go look at the same thing and say, this is great, and someone else say, this is horrible. And guess what? Both people are right because it's personally subjective. It's, it's what you see. It's what you view. And the beautiful part of our community, we're working together to get more perspectives, more eyeballs on it. Just like what Luis said. You know, Luis says she tends to trust too easily. And so, you know, she's tuning in. I can be like the devil's advocate. It's like, oh, this project looks great. However, <laughs> however, what about this over here? What about this over here? What about this over here? Okay? So that is simply my role. My role is not to tell you that a project is good or bad. I just want to plant seeds of skepticism. <laughs> I want to plant seeds of skepticism and doubt and make you second guess all the, the shiny objects that these people are putting in front of you. Why? Because if someone wants your money more than you want to keep it, they're going to get it one way or the other. One way or the other, someone's going to get it. Okay? And, uh, you know, I, I want us to be diligent and I want us to be um, intentional and uh, a level of healthy skepticism is, uh, is, is a good thing in this space. Okay, it's a good thing in this space. So, let me take a look at Factor. Factor was scouted by uh, Gordon Gecko, Mr. Consistency. Take a look at the websites. All right, Factor. DeFi middleware, the infrastructure and liquidity layer for DeFi. Factor's DeFi infrastructure provides strategists, builders, and market participants with the building blocks to launch new markets. So it looks like they definitely want us to join Discord. Your own DeFi building blocks. Tokenized baskets, self-custodial tokenized. Self-custodial tokenized, I think that's supposed to be with a D, tokenized baskets, thematic indices, and more. Yield aggregation, permissionless access to yield across DeFi protocols, hedged strategies, hedge your DeFi exposure with a single click. Integration and vault partners, I don't know what some of these are. <laughs> Asset managers, Use Factor as a frictionless way to manage your treasury or fund, build on-chain track record, and earn management and performance fees. Protocols. Integrate your assets and create unique vaults with Factor to gain wider exposure, create new use cases, and drive TVL for your protocol. Investors. Access a wide range of yield generating strategies and asset classes and earn yield on your ideal assets. Here's a revenue model. Vault creators. Vault creators earn management and performance fees. Factor down. Factor takes a small fee on deposit swaps and vault creator fees. FCTR holders lock for V factor for a share of protocol revenue and governance rights. The team. Now this is a really interesting play. All right, everything I've seen so far speaks volumes about professionalism. Um, they're on point. They're, uh, it's clean. It's, it flows well. And then we see the team. And there was, there was clearly the opportunity for people to be flexible and, uh, and show their team spirit with, you know, whatever images that they wanted. Um, I'm not opposed to it. It just feels way different. Uh, it just feels way different. Again, not opposed to it, but it feels different. And so, you know, these guys are... These guys are not. Uh, I mean, I I would say they're 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 quasi doxed because you do have a, a Twitter, um, and so you know that's cool. You can see some stuff from him, but you know we don't necessarily know his name, and that's okay. Um, but like they they they're clearly making it known that like hey you know here's who we are, via Twitter. Well, that one just goes to factor. Dow, that was weird. 
And that one goes to Alex. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, these. Th I mean, he even has a blue check. So again, I'm not. I'm not opposed to this. It was definitely just kind of jarring. It was kind of jarring um, when I was going through that. But yeah, every one of them have their their uh, their old old Twitter up there. Now this dude, he joined uh, January. I think this was probably the newest one. That was a year ago. The newest Twitter. Same with this this dude. Oh, he's he's an OG. You know, crazy, funny funny story. I was actually on Twitter before Twitter was Twitter. <laughs> I found Twitter in two thousand and seven, two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I mean, it was in its infancy, and. Uh, yeah, I was a. That was probably one of the only one of the first times I was a uh, early adopter. I mean, I didn't necessarily use it. I didn't know how to. <laughs> I didn't know why people would want me to tweet about my day in 144 characters or less. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Docs. What kind of docs do we have here? Introducing factor. Okay. <clears throat> Problem, lack of transparency, soiled protocols, complex user journeys, limited flexibility, technical barriers, inability to fractionalize. Here's their solution. Builders, protocols, asset managers, investors. Factors open-ended DeFi toolbox that allows users to create custom strategies based on a wide range of editable inputs. These inputs include a variety of yield generators, risk models, and risk appetite settings. Completely automated, permissionless, non-custodial, advanced risk management, revenue share, uh, earn fees as a vault creator, white label solution, advanced analytics, community-driven governance. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, how does this website make you guys feel? You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, I throw some shade at certain websites. What, what do you guys think of this website? What do you guys think of this website? How does it make you feel as I'm going through this other stuff? <clears throat> Johnny says, first impressions if you're genuine. Roman says, whoa, he knows Yon Zero, the solidarity dev. He's part of a Nouns DAO, a community of creative entrepreneurs I partnered with at the Rose Parade this year. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I I think so. There's two things that I'm factoring in here. <laughs> there's two things that, that that I'm factoring in here. I don't I don't discredit this team. Um, I think what they're creating is pretty legit. Uh, but also, I I'm, I'm I know Gordon Gecko, and there's there's one other detail that I'm I'm you know we haven't got to yet that creates some that creates some legitimacy to what's going on. Um, it was just the images that we went from this to this. It made me like pump the brakes a little bit. Um, but uh, let's hop into Telegram. Let's see what we can see in Telegram. Let's join the group. All right. So they do have a. Uh, let me prove I'm human here. All right. So there's a capture or a you know, make sure everything is good to go. All right. So uh, Telegram, we got 2,100 members. 2,100 members and uh, 42 pin messages. January 30th was the first pin message. Nope, it was not. January 11th, no, we got more than that. So October 24, 2022, looks like the first, first handful of messages we have here. We got the first handful of messages going on here.
<laughs> All right, let's see. We have any good project? Nope. Okay. AMAs. What about recording? AMA recording. Oh, looks like they do a lot of their stuff through Discord. Okay. Well, let me see. Let me try that over here. Let me see here. Well, that's weird. I was trying to get in Discord, but it's not uh, it's not letting me right now. So no Discord for now. <laughs> yeah, it looks like they probably do a lot of stuff in uh, in Discord there. Let's see about um, let's see about Telegram. I'm sorry, Twitter. Twenty thousand followers. This tweet was put out today. Oh, that's some good engagement. 65,000. 65,000 views. There's some good engagement for their uh, their Twitter account. The fifth episode of The Key Factor. That's a cool play on words. I like that. 458 people tuned in. That was today. That was today. Yeah, they've, they've got some decent stuff going on here. Oh, then I have a lot of tweets. Or do they? Am I? Oh, sorry. There we go. There we go. Let me get back out of there. <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting. Some things pump really good. Uh, you know, view counts and some things are kind of meager. I'm not a Twitter expert, but uh, they're super active on Twitter. Wow. All of that was from the last, just today. All that was from today. So pretty active there. Hey, Wojtek. How you doing? Hope you're well, my friend. Yeah, for Meng, Meng says it feels like, you know, looks like uh, it has a, a vibe of the AI sites. It is a pretty basic website, isn't it? <clears throat> it's pretty basic. Pretty basic website. I would like to join Discord, but I guess I'll do that offline. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one other thing that um, lended some credibility to this project. Let's go down here. Pin messages. <clears throat> so I took a lot, look at this. And this is the first time I've heard of uh, Camelot. And so this is the uh, this is the pre-sell. This is the pre-sell. All right. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to see. So let me let me zoom in here. Factor, and this is a fair launch. This is a fair launch. Factor revolutionizes on-chain asset management by providing the middleware infrastructure to aggregate core DeFi products and liquidity. Our robust platform gives protocols, treasuries, and individuals the tools to create and manage powerful financial instruments through any combination of tokenized baskets, yield pools, or derivatives. Our no-code UI UX allows builders and asset managers to create innovate, innovative products and build strategies. Vaults or even entire protocols to acquire TVL and earn fees. It lets investors build their ideal DeFi portfolio, deposit and receive yield with a single click, institutional grade, scalable asset management on Arbitrum. Utilizing the native Factor token, Factor operates fully a fully decentralized sustainable revenue model from day one. The protocol takes a percentage of the deposit withdrawal transaction, vault management, and performance fees and redistributes 50% to the V factor stakers and 50% to the DAO. Pretty cool. So right there, I mean, it even talked about, um, um, 
Utilizing the native token, it operates a fully decentralized, sustainable revenue model from day one. <clears throat> Please ensure you understand the public. Okay, this is just uh, the uh, the Camelot thing. But right now, <clears throat> right now, it's a big raise. They've raised 5.2 milli. Okay, 5.2 million so far. That's a big raise. We're looking at a starting market cap of 16, 16.9 million. It's pretty juicy. And there's still two days and 20 hours left. Two days and 20 hours left. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty, it's pretty big. This is a big boy, this is a big boy play. And this goes back to what we talked about last week when we looked at the minima. You know, some of these projects are not what we normally see in the crypto pre-sale space. Some of these projects look like, you know, they're swinging for the fence and wanting to be game changers and industry changers and m movers and makers in the space. Roman says that uh, Vela is on Camelot. Oh, okay, perfect. I did not know that. Let's see if we can see some others. Uh, I wonder... Can I search Vela? Vela? It's a pretty cool loading screen there. Oh, it's just only showing three right now. That's interesting. <coughs> okay, so back over here to uh, Factor. Yeah, so this is a big, this is a big raise. Uh, I'm not really sure how much more they're going to be uh, raising, but so one of the things that really stands out. And so this is something to keep in mind. Um, <clears throat> you know, there was a lot of backlash from people when we moved from Telegram to Discord. I really want to get in Discord. Let me see if I can try again. <laughs> Let me see if we can make this happen. I want to get in Discord. There we go. So 10,000 members, and we got 2,000 members online. Okay, uh, complete. Yes, thank you. Continue. Okay. Enter captcha. Uh, 3-U-Y-S-X-S. Submit. Hey, I got it in. All right, so they had uh, 10,000 10, members. Now, what I'm really curious about uh, with this project, what I started to say a minute ago, so here we have in their Telegram group that's linked on the website, we have uh, 2,100 members. 2,100 members, okay? On Camelot, They've currently raised 5.2 million. Now, I, I would wish, I wish it would show, I'm new to Camelot, so let me try to figure this out. But I wish it would show the amount of contributors. I don't, I don't currently see that. I don't currently see that. Um, but that's okay. Uh, but that seems like a really big raise. And so, you know, people talk, people talk a big game and they want to complain about, oh, why'd we move from Telegram? Why'd we do this? Why'd we do that? And, um, you know, there's a handful of projects. Uh, you know, I, I like doing research in Telegram. Uh, I find Discord a little more challenging to do research in. Uh, as far as using the platform, I really like Discord. Uh, but Telegram, I, you know, strictly for research purposes. But in my own research for finding crypto pre sales, to add on the calendar scouting projects, I'm finding some of the projects that I'm looking at actually don't have Telegram. Like there's projects that are moving away from it. And, you know, so people will argue, well, everyone's on Telegram. Okay, 2,100 members here, but yet this group has, you know, 10,000 members and 2,000 of which are online. <laughs> and, you know, this is a big project. Currently raised 5.2 million, okay? Um, you know, potential market cap is 16.9. It's like, okay. <laughs> it's 
It's like, okay, I mean, people can have opinions about what they would like to see or what they think is better, but sometimes when you look at the numbers, it's like, well, hold on a second. Like, hold on a second. So, let me uh, go back over here to chat. All right, great. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty pretty big, uh, looks like a legit um, a legit project. Um, like I said, the... the 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 shockingness of you know these images you know it doesn't necessarily bother me you know they've they're, they're not trying to hide it's not like uh, it's not like the the project we looked at earlier that they're you know using bogus AI pictures it was way different though it, it was it was a different vibe after going through here and you know seeing these uh, but no I feel I feel pretty good about it uh, Twitter is super active they're super active on Twitter. Um, and they have what was it twenty thousand? Yeah, twenty thousand followers on Twitter. Twenty thousand followers. Uh, but yeah, so any any whatever feelings I had about the the shock factor of these images about the team uh, were quickly erased um, when uh, you know when I see this. Um, also, when I see this on uh, on Twitter, you know, it seems like a lot of people are excited about this. Yeah, Camelot's doing looks like Camelot's doing some good things. Two point three thousand people tuned into that Twitter space. Yeah. They're raising a lot of funds too. Like these projects that are on Camelot, they're raising some significant funds. Uh, Three hundred thousand, almost four. Trove. Oh, that wasn't a lot. That was just eight thousand. Oh no no no! Sorry, <laughs> thirteen million. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what uh, what Gordon Gordon said. Uh, one of the things he said was, I'm "Not a fan of pre sale fair launches as they tend to exhaust buy pressure before launch. Not a negative for the project, but caution for when to enter if interested." Yeah, and that's one of the things that I still find fascinating. I still find that fascinating. Um, that you know these are really big raises, and uh, some of this could have been buy pressure. You know, some of this could have been buy pressure at launch. Yeah, I wonder if uh, you know Meng is uh, is is um, is Arbitrum. Is that like the uh, the flavor of the month? And people are tired of the the shenanigans on um, BSC space, and you know uh, they don't want you know. I actually haven't done much on Ethereum lately. I know, you know, when I first came into the space, the gas was unbelievable on uh, on, on Ethereum. Um, but you know, maybe it's it's uh, maybe it's just that new a new token that people are, hey, this is this is awesome. Let's go rock this, um, and uh, let's go do our thing. Yeah, I think I think uh, Roman, I think the the Vela, I think Vela was on Arbitrum, I believe. I believe. <clears throat> so that's my uh, that's my take on this, boys and girls. Um, hope uh, you got a little something out of today's session. If you were, like I said, if you're brand new, if you're a beginner in the crypto pre-sales, um, scouting projects to the CrowdX calendar is hands down the best way to learn and essentially risk-free, high upside and massive ROI on your time and your funds. Um, and I, I would I would I would wager to say that you know the, there's there's j uh, just as good if not better if you're new um, that participating on the Crowdex calendar scouting projects if you're brand new that is just as good if not better than participating in pre-sales and that's not financial advice I'm just saying that uh, you know I'm not telling you what you should do I'm just simply saying that there there's there's a massive opportunity. Scouting project on the Craddock's calendar and the hot streak bonuses pay out nice juicy bonuses.
So we talked about that. We talked a little bit about the AI on the, on that other the other project. It looked like they had some AI AI generated images. And then we wrapped up today's conversation talking about Factor, um, which then brought us into uh, you know a new a new network, new chain that is uh, dominating. You know, a lot of people are putting their their money in that, and uh, you know those are trends. Those are trends, and it's worth you know paying attention to that stuff. So, hopefully today's session was helpful. Hope you guys got something out of it, and it was uh, it was beneficial. And so, uh, with that, I'll end like I always do, like my mentor always said, life can be short. So for those that you care and love, let them know you care and love them. Hey, I appreciate you guys. I care about you guys. I love you guys. Thank you for being here. Thank you for contributing. And um, look forward to carrying on this conversation in Discord. And uh, we'll be back in on Thursday, same time, same place. So until then, I'll see you in Discord. Bye for now.